Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much and welcome to our webinar. Uh, my name is Dominic and I work with Amazon selling partner App Store. As you may know, the App Store is a one stop shop for you to discover and enable more than 2,500 trusted apps to help you grow and manage your businesses. We are continuing our webinar series today with a presentation from our software partner NetSuite on how to leverage key indicators to guide Amazon strategy and success. Without further ado, I now give the floor to Christine. Thanks so much, Dominic. Uh, we are really excited to be here today. My name is Christine and I'm a senior marketing manager over here at Oracle NetSuite. Um, I just want to give you a quick introduction to NetSuite. We are the number one cloud ERP. We have over 34,000 customers in over 200 countries, all running on the same version of the product. Um, we have some fantastic speakers here for you today. I'd like to introduce Jake Cook, co-founder of Tadpole and guest lecturer and con contributor for Harvard Business School and Montana State University. Uh, later, we will hear from Jess Wall, Principal Solution Consultant at NetSuite with over 25 years of experience in e-commerce, marketing, ERP, design and development. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass this over to Jake from Tadpole. Excellent, thanks, Christine. Uh, welcome everybody, excited to be here this morning. We've been putting this together the last few weeks and had a ton of fun collaborating. So um, I'm gonna walk you through some examples of KPIs and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but real quick, a little bit about us here at Tadpole. We've been around for about 10 years. Uh, we manage about $350 million for our clients so kind of across the board, primarily an omni-channel. And we typically see around 10 to 20% of compound annual growth or CAGR for the merchants we serve. So how do we do that? Well, we see e-com as this kind of blend of data science and artificial intelligence. And then we mix in a little bit of digital marketing and then ultimately uh, commerce strategy. And a lot of that data that drives our AI comes from a built for NetSuite application as well. So we'll, uh, we'll get into some of the stuff and what you can do with those things here in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna get to a little bit here on what we're thinking about with, with KPIs. We wanna be like monitoring um, the trouble spots we're gonna see as well. Um, the next piece is kind of think about whether a goal needs to be adjusted. So are we on goal to forecast? What does that look like? And what are we off? And more importantly, what is the most important forecast? And is there kind of a tree that unpacks from that forecast of variables that we need to uh, monitor? And we're gonna have an example here in a little bit on how that goes. And then again, in that measuring towards goal, if you have investors or if you're the owner, like, you know, you really wanna be able to see, are we on goal or not um, for your stakeholders as well. And so how do you choose these? This is probably the most important thing, way ahead of the data and measuring the data and things like that. What matters most? Um, do they really measure progress? And these get into more of the cultural components of the entity or the operation and what you're thinking about. So you want vanity metrics is something you might've heard and we'll show you an example of kind of lame, better, best in terms of like what's a vanity metric. Um, again, that predicting trends, if you're familiar with some basic statistics, there's things like regression analysis or logistic regression, that's fancy terms you need to know, but it's basically that slope we learned in, uh, in algebra, trying to predict what's happening for those trends. Is our revenue going up? Are we moving the right products? All that kind of stuff as well. And do they truly matter to our business? Probably the most important thing is to really wrestle with KPIs and be mm -hmm. open to revisiting KPIs as you get more data. The other thing to think about too is, just once you start to look at data and visualize it, you'll inevitably get more questions. So this is kind of this infinite loop you go around over and over and over again as you see, you get better insights to what matters. Um, and then again, aligning with our business goals. And the pro tip I always really, really think that folks get tripped up on is validating your data. And Jess will talk a little bit more about NetSuite and getting good, clean data in. But it's very easy. And if anybody's worked in Google Analytics or some of this stuff, I've had uh, in my career seen people say, oh, our site converts at 23% and it has for three years. And you go in and you say, well, it looks like an intern a couple of years ago set the um, about page as a conversion goal. And so that's why actually 25% of your traffic is getting to the about page, but they're not actually purchasing stuff. So validating that data before you review your KPIs is really, really important because it's kind of garbage in and garbage out. So here's a fun fact. Research from Dr. Ron Berman and Dr. Ayelet Israeli at Harvard Business School. Um, these are wonderful academics that study e-commerce. And what they found is if you basically have a team that just looks at your data weekly, just weekly, and all they do is just look at the data, you can see a four to 10% increase in revenue. They looked at 1600 different stores in their research study and they found just by consistently looking and accessing the data, they were able to increase revenue substantially. No changes in margins or prices or anything, just looking at the data. So we always say like data plus discipline will build an empire. 
So we're going to get back into this kind of like EKG metaphor real quick here. So if we look at this slide, you might be like, okay, a vanity metric would be like, what were our sales in 2022? So we're going to see like, okay, this is a lame, what we call maybe a vanity metric. Our revenue was $80,000 in this, this product or store. Um, we might look like, oh, well, from 21 to 22 is up 1.3%. So we're getting better. Like, okay, that's telling us something changing over time. It basically tells us a much better story. When we look at 2019 to 2022 over four years, we see for this revenue for product, it was basically flat, plus or minus 2%. And now we're starting to identify trends, multi-year trends, and especially in e-commerce where seasonality may drive your business. Understanding re, you know, Q4 of this year versus three years ago, if you've been through the pandemic and had big swings up or down, that gets to be really interesting as well. So looking at this EKG and, and kind of analyzing it, apples to apples by quarter, by year, whatever makes sense for your business is really, really important. Okay, so now we have an idea of kind of like, you know, the EKG model. We're gonna get into a little bit of like kind of some key things to, to monitor the health of your business. And one of my all time favorite ones is customer lifetime value. And there's lots of ways to calculate this. If you're really interested in customer lifetime value, there's a professor at the Wharton School named Dr. Peter Fader. Pete's a wonderful, wonderful uh, lecturer, become a good friend in over the years and his research with um, Dan McCarthy at Emory walks through how to calculate lifetime value. And it's a really great North Star. If you want to go even deeper, there's a cover story in Harvard Business Review that walks through um, how you can value companies based on the individual lifetime value of each customer, kind of roll them all up into a group. But this is a slide that I think is really helpful. If we look at kind of a group of customers we acquire and how much it takes to get that customer, and then we kind of extrapolate out over the next couple months or years or whatever, what they purchase, and how often they purchase, and we get clues on our capital needs. So in this example, we might say, well, this customer group for last year, we don't really make money on them until like month four or five. So we're like, wow, we can't really plan on harvesting what we captured for profit for a while on that. So this gives you clues for cash flow predictions as well, which is really powerful if you're um, taking lines of credit out or an SBA loan, things like that. So that lifetime value to acquisition cost or customer acquisition cost, CAC is what it's called, is a really good one to wrestle with too. So once we know acquisition costs, we're gonna think of e-commerce in kind of two pieces here. We're gonna get acquisition and then retention. And there's some clues here on KPIs that you wanna watch as well. So this is, uh, you know, uh, a company here, you know, redacted, but there's a canary in the coal mine if you look at the data. So while the, you know, 2022 maybe was a record-breaking year for for new customers, when we look at the retained customers, we're actually on a downward slide. So there's some things here that we're bleeding customers year in, year out. That's kind of uh, indicative of we might have problems with our product mix. Uh, we're not doing a good job following up, or we're not building loyalty. Now the caveat here is, you know, one-time purchases. I'm going to speak just really quick. If you have a business model where maybe it's, as we say, kind of one and done, you know, you want to have really good margins here. So our acquisition costs and then our margins need to be really high because we kind of get one swipe at that customer to harvest that contribution margin. But if it's a repeat purchase model or there's ways to cross sell through your product catalog, that retained customer is really important. You'll typically see about an 80-20 split. Um, some of the best will be maybe 50-50. Uh, every customer is going to probably fall off and not purchase with you eventually. And the research calls this buy till you die. Uh, and Dr. Fader, you know, put a lot of this forth in the research the last few years. But this is going to be a really good indicator when on retention and tracking that. So just tracking retained customers on a quarterly or yearly basis really starts to provide some canaries in the coal mine for you. The next one's going to acquisition now. So we've looked at kind of, you know, lifetime values are our North Star to see if we have a good sustainable business, what that looks like. We kind of acquisition retention. Let's go a little bit deeper in acquisition. Um, no surprise, the Amazon ad platform is incredibly powerful. You know, two thirds of searches these days start on Amazon. That's where the eyeballs are. And just like if you've run traditional paid media and other channels, uh, return on ad spend is a really key thing to kind of watch. There's some advantages with Amazon ads as well, where we're not quite struggling to see attribution like we were when we're maybe doing something a little bit um, outside Amazon. So we're gonna be looking at what a good average ROAS score is. Now this gets into seasonality as well, where maybe we have more competition in the fourth quarter. You, When you know your ROAS, if it's dipping, um, maybe you start to, and you don't have a seasonal business, maybe you back off and say, look, I'm not gonna compete in the auctions, but I know in Q1, when everyone kind of pulls out, that's my opportunity. So this is an example of kind of looking year over year um, for revenue and, and ad spend and kind of where those spikes are as well too. Um, we can get into some of the more nerdier things like media efficiency ratios and all that kind of stuff but 
ultimately looking at return on ad spend is a really key thing to track and strategize against. Acquisition, okay, another one is turning that data into uh, to dollars. And we talk about leveraging product data a lot. So if you have a large SKU count in your store, you probably have some, uh, like, uh, like all of us, some dogs in the mix that are just taking up uh, shelf space and tying up capital that aren't moving. And so understanding how to either move that with product data. So maybe we have good margins, maybe we have low margins, but really good turns. So we don't make a lot, but man, that product just consistently moves. That is something we can start to kind of fine tune how we think about running ads against it, for example. Another thing is if you're um, looking at your product descriptions, testing and even split testing, like I've got say a thousand SKUs, I'm gonna take 200, 100 of them, I'm gonna rewrite the descriptions by hand and 100 I'm just gonna kind of feed from the manufacturer in and see what happens and kind of split testing to see. And if you see those hundreds start to get really good lift off the product descriptions, then you can like say, okay, we're gonna double down and test and see what we can do on the rest of it. But that product data and what you can do with the net, uh, the net suite data where it lives provides huge opportunities to really optimize your rankings and into feeds um, for Amazon as well. Okay, another one. Now we talked about acquisition a little bit, and what we can think about that with products. Now let's talk about retention, that other kind of twin that's really important for e-commerce. The repeat purchase behavior. Now this is the one I, I call with my students, uh, the Batman graph. We want to look if Batman has two horns sticking up. And on the far right, we see in this data set that this customer uh, group has 7x. They're repeating, they're repeating seven times. And so these are basically cash cow customers because we already have them buying, maybe they're aware of the brand, we're moving them through our product catalog. We wanna be thinking about what we do with those customers and more importantly, studying their buying behavior or where they come in. So for example, maybe we sell iPhone accessories and we have headphones or microphones or cases or whatever we might do around that, right? Well, maybe the customer starts with an iPhone case and we see our first purchase in the category is gonna be a case. But in three months, they start to buy, you know, uh, screen protectors or whatever. We can start to think about how we pulse and move our inventory against that and also where the opportunities lie. And what's really fascinating is we look at average order value in this data set, it's $236. So the person that bought twice spends around $194 each time. But in this data set, they're spending 236. And those are direct cash cows to your bottom line. So understanding that repeat purchase behavior and matching product mix is a huge KPI for boosting margins. All right, repeat product behavior. As I mentioned earlier, there's everyone's got them. If you have a big enough SKU count, you've got some dogs. The, the Pareto distribution, the 90-10 or 80-20. Um, what's fascinating is a lot of people will see their product mix and they'll kind of see it as, a sna as you know, static and not changing. But when you go back and analyze things on, a, again, that EKG of yearly or quarterly, you're probably gonna see some things that's fading, right? And we wanna understand what's moving by quarter. In this data set, we're looking at just monthly. This, this, this product moves quite a bit. There's a lot of SKUs coming in and out. Um, but you understand that product mix over time because you might be placing orders six months in lead times with factories only to discover you know, that, man, there was a trailing pattern showing that this product's just not selling. It's not turning like we thought it would. And again, this is that kind of trade-off with large SKU counts. So if you have 20 SKUs, Maybe, you know, this is stuff you might be able to kind of quickly, you know, throw into an Excel sheet and analyze. But if you have a lot of SKUs, product categories is a good way to kind of group them and see. And then even sorting and building um, some pivot tables based on margins and sorting by category can be really helpful too. Because you want to get those, get those out of there if they're uh, starting to trail off as well for retention. And um, finally, when we kind of roll all this up, if you're kind of in omni-channel, you know, we want to be thinking about um, e-commerce, Amazon, and wholesale and retail. There's some merchants that kind of span all those, maybe some are you know, pure, pure Amazon, but understanding kind of how those channels are moving and changing and what your profits are, uh, average order value, all that kind of stuff. And then you can start to basically assess performance by, by channel um, for acquisition costs and things like that. Now, there's also a thing here too, where you can look at lifetime value by channel. And if you want to get super advanced, you're starting to see like, hmm, do customers that bought in wholesale buy more? And this gets into B2B and apples to oranges perhaps, but understanding uh, lifetime value by channel really lets you make some very, very smart bets on that side of it. So uh, I'd strongly encourage you to think about that. NetSuite makes it super easy to pull and categorize the data. And you can again track this almost down to a, an hourly basis, which is a little too granular, but monthly, if not quarterly, is a really good spot, especially for you know strategic planning meetings. Okay, this is all great, but maybe you're staring at a blank canvas. <laughs> you're not sure where to think about where KPIs, how do I get started? Uh, we've kind of open sourced a workbook based on um, some of my, my uh, 
classes I teach here as well at Tadpole. So you go to tadpole.com slash Amazon. You can download a copy at the bottom of the page. And it's just going to kind of get you past that, oh gosh, where do we start? And there's a golden equation in e-commerce and probably many on this call know that, but I think this is something that maybe is worth considering is looking at our traffic times our conversion rate times our average order value equals our revenue. And where a lot of people get really obsessed is they'll think about traffic. How do I get more traffic to my page? What do I need to do? And they're boosting, they're boosting, they're boosting, and they're doing all sorts of stuff. But there's something that's really interesting that has a huge outsized impact, and that's conversion rate. So we can try and get a thousand more people to the site, or we might be able to like move our conversion rate a few tenths of a percent. Um, average order value, that's also something where we got cross-selling or you know bundling stuff uh, in cart, things like that, which can help move the average order value as well. But if you approach kind of at a top line, your top, your revenue with these three levers, um, you're going to be in a really good position to make really smart bets um, without getting falling into the trap of just grinding to grab more traffic where a lot of people get stuck. So um, this workbook will walk you through that. Again, you'll see that kind of EKG model. We're going to start with kind of our current year. You know, you can change Q1, you can look at weekly, monthly, whatever, but it'll kind of have, you know, pull all this down. Good old pen and paper is a great place to start kind of comparing. And then again, on that far right, you'll see kind of percent change and stuff like that too. So you can look, for example, our traffic Q1 of this year versus last year, our conversion rate this year versus last year, and our AOV this year versus last year. And then you say, gosh, if we move conversion rate just up 10%, what does that spit out for revenue? And this lets you quickly assess like where you should focus your efforts for growing your e-commerce store as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my colleague, Jess, who will walk you through how you can get all this great data out of NetSuite, how you like take action on it and come up with ideas and inspiration to grow your store. So Jess, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, great, Jake. Thanks so much for teaming me up for success here. Uh, amazing information about metrics and everybody should be sure to download that workbook as well to get started here because uh, it's a, a great way to get started. But to start with, uh, I'd like to say hi to everybody out there attending from the many different time zones and locations. My name is Jess, uh, Jess Wall. I'm a principal solution consultant here at NetSuite. Uh, and today I'd like to talk to you about how NetSuite can help you gain valuable insights into your Amazon business that you might not have today. So topics that we'll touch on today include ease of use, uh, visibility to accurate inventory, true picture of costs, and sales insight beyond just simple item sales reporting. And this will be a quick one, just so you know. It's just, you know, basically saying, okay, well, that sounds good to start, but how do we actually do it? Next, we can help you simplify your online selling by becoming the central hub for all your company's data. To start with, the NetSuite Amazon Connector allows you to automatically map data between NetSuite and your Amazon stores. And when I say that we map data, I'm not just talking about order information. I'm also talking about your Amazon product information as well. Uh, names of items, SKU numbers, descriptions, pricing, and much more are all mapped automatically into NetSuite for every product that you sell. And if you have other sales channels, like Jake was alluding to earlier, um, we've also got connectors for other e-commerce storefronts or other online marketplaces and point of sale systems to automatically transfer data between platforms. And by automating the transfer of data, you keep all of your vital information centralized and eliminate manual data entry, costly errors and delays, and processes that you may do today with spreadsheets and email. Another main feature of NetSuite's Amazon Connector is our Amazon Settlement Sync, which helps you import all of your detailed Amazon fees and refunds and automatically post them right into NetSuite's general ledger. Excuse me, general ledger. Uh, that's a good start. So, you know, what does this actually look like inside of NetSuite? That's where I want to get to. And I want to start simple. Here's a key performance indicator taken directly off of my NetSuite dashboard. I can quickly see metrics around sales, expenses, cost of goods sold, inventory values, and much more. And it's a good start, but let's dive a little deeper into what we're seeing here. For each key performance indicator on your dashboard, you get to choose what time period NetSuite should evaluate for you. This month versus last month, this quarter versus last quarter, this year versus last year, and much more. And then NetSuite will provide you in near real time the actual metrics, as well as the percentage change over time. Now, personally, I'm a lot more of a visual person, so I kind of like to be hit over the head when something is going great and when something is not. So why not just make the metrics that matter to you larger and easier to read? So green is good, red equals let's investigate. And better yet, any of those metrics that you see on the dashboard, you can just click on to take a deeper dive. Now, for you folks out there who would like to use uh, or like to track multiple sales channels like an e-commerce website, retail store, or a wholesale channel alongside your Amazon store or stores, what can NetSuite do for you? 
Let's start with comparing your sales channels over time, right on the dashboard. Easily compare your Amazon store's performance to your other channels to see what strategic decisions should I be making about each individual channel. Now that we've got better visibility into our company, we can start to have a lot of fun with reports that are built right into NetSuite. Um, let's take a deeper look at inventory profitability to start because Jake was already touching on this earlier um, to let us know whether things are moving and if they're profitable or not. Let's hypothetically say that you'd like to be 50% profitable for the items that you sell across the board. NetSuite's inventory profitability report lets you easily see what your profit margin is per item. If a profit margin is lower than you like, maybe it's time to look for a different vendor for that specific product. Or maybe we need to increase the price just a bit to make sure that we're profitable. Um, this report quickly lets you see how many items we have sold, uh, what was our total cost per item, what's our gross profit, and more. Now that we know if we're profitable or not, let's see how quickly our inventory is turning over with NetSuite's inventory turnover report. This report is absolutely one of my favorites because it lets me know instantly how many days my items are sitting in FBA or in my local warehouse, for instance. And let's face it, inventory on the shelves is your cash flow sitting on a shelf. And it can make business owners nervous if they don't know exactly how much money is sitting out there on the shelf. If something is sitting there too long, let's do something about it to move it quickly and get that cash off the shelf and back into your bank account. Another favorite of mine is our inventory valuation report. How many items do I have on hand right now? What's the percentage value of each item? Are any of those items taking up a high percentage of my overall inventory value? And if so, is that good or bad? You get to decide. So the bottom line is, is that every single user in NetSuite can choose KPIs that matter to you and your specific role all in one place. With the final result being a simple personalized dashboard for every single NetSuite user. Everyone can have something unique to the metrics that matter to them right in front of them as soon as they log into NetSuite first thing in the morning when you grab that cup of coffee or a cup of tea to get your day started. By combining the power of Amazon and NetSuite together, we're providing you with ease of use and insights on a single dashboard that you just don't have today. So in summary, NetSuite combines the power of your Amazon stores with our enterprise resource planning platform to truly achieve a full 360 degree view of your business. Don't take my word for it. Let's just take it from our customer, International Wine Accessories. When it comes to managing marketplace selling on Amazon, it's a set it and forget it approach with the NetSuite connector. I gotta be honest, I couldn't have said it better myself. And this leads me to my final thought for today on this quick little presentation is that NetSuite provides a single system to run your entire business on. When your Amazon store is unified with your other business processes, you can gain an unprecedented level of efficiency and real-time visibility to make better business decisions. With NetSuite, your company no longer needs to manage several systems and stumble through manually importing data to get everything work to, to work together. It just works natively inside the platform. So thanks very much for your time. Uh, Jake, also, I really appreciate your time.